Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord Amen. on a Sunday morning, <coughs> November the 20th, 2022. We're going to be reading in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and I want to start all the way down to verse 35. Uh, I want to talk about faith a little bit this morning. Uh, I, Brother uh, Jim, I asked Ken Ramlin, I said, what are you going to preach on in the morning? He said, I don't know. He said, he, I saw, I, he said I, I've got something for you to preach on. He said, it would be right down your alley. I know something you could preach on. I said, what's that? I thought, well, he's got an idea. He said, the platform. <laughs> I said, well, I could use a little. Can you elaborate a little more? He said, but he mentioned, he said, we need, we need more faith. If we, we need preaching on anything. We need to be preaching on more faith. And you know what? I had been thinking, that had been, uh, I've been reading a book about faith, and I've been listening, and so it was just confirmation. So I want to read about this. In uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise well we got some good preaching right there mm -hmm. that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise <coughs> yet for a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. <clears throat> now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But you, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You know... Many, many people that we run into contact with during the day, say some people walked in this building right here, are, there's, there's, a, there's a spirit of discouragement that tries, and a spirit of fear that just, uh, and uh, I don't know, it's uh, helplessness and hopelessness that seems like I see this in a lot of people's lives. I see it in families. You know, it's hopeless and, 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 uh, I just see a great amount of, uh, of profound despair. If you know what I'm saying? People are just despairing. I, it ain't never going to get no better. How many, how many people have you heard lately and just said, I'm throwing my hands up, I'm just going to quit. Throwing in the towel. You can't just quit. Amen. And that's, that's a problem. You can't throw in the towel. No, there ain't nothing to give up to. But you can live in that terrible, hopeless de in state of despair. But you know, the book of Hebrews, believe it or not, was written to people who felt that very same way. Did you know that? And what this last verse of scriptures that I was, that these, that these verses of scriptures I just read to you in the 10th chapter of Hebrews they're speaking to those people in that same atmosphere of hopeless, you know, despair. And uh, seems like I, I'm, just, I'm just ready to quit and give up. It ain't going to never get no better. These are the same kind of people that that was written to. Ain't God good to know that they, you know, that he, he has something for us today. Because this... If, it, what it, if you read that again, I won't, I won't belabor it. I'm going to try to get done early enough. I won't read it again. But if you read that very carefully today, you'll see that what he's talking about is endurance. He said, you have need of patience. And, and he gives you this promise that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. But then, he, said, he, he throws the big monkey wrench in it that changes everything. Listen to this part. Now the just shall live by faith. 
This is a key that I want to, I always want to share with you a little something, a gem and a little jewel that the Lord <coughs> opened up to me, that the just shall live by faith. You've heard this all of your life, but let's, let's, let's look at uh, emphasizing a different word here. I want to talk about faith, but I want you to notice here that he says the just shall think by faith, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk by faith. No, he said live by faith. In other words, what he's saying is that faith, whatever this thing called faith is, we'll have to define that here in just a few minutes, but whatever this thing called faith is, it's, it's not supposed to be an event or, or, or something that you have at church ever so often. It's supposed to be a lifestyle, living in faith, living in that faith. Amen. Walking in that faith. Amen. Believing, thinking, sleeping in faith. My God, resting in Christ in faith. Amen. It's not supposed to be an event that happens when an evangelist comes. Oh, this is a great man of faith. Come on down. No, it's supposed to be a lifestyle. If you're righteous, if you're just, if if you're okay with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, if you repented of your sins, let him come in and, 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 and make a new creature out of you. You are just. You are justified by his blood. And the just are not supposed to just have faith ever so often when you come to church or see it, hey man, every now and then exhibit it. It's not supposed to be an event. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. My God. Amen. It's supposed to be how you roll. That's how I roll, brother. What's that? I, I roll with faith. Hey Amen. This church is built on a foundation of faith. Hey Amen. This church is still here because of faith. Hey Amen. Not because, hey Amen, we knew it was going to be here. Not because, hey Amen, we willed it to be here. Or not because we just worked so hard. Yeah, there's been a lot of work. There's been a lot of set. There's been a lot of will. There's been a whole lot of money. There's been a whole lot of everything that's went into having this. Hey Amen. But it started out and it's still, hey Amen, operated by faith. I have no idea, hey Amen, what's going to happen tomorrow. But I know who holds tomorrow. Hey Amen. That's faith. Amen. I had no idea, amen, that we was going to be able to buy that property over there when it came up for auction. Matter of fact, every every circumstance looked in the opposite. We didn't have the money, no way to borrow the money. Had no way of doing it. But guess what? By faith, I said, God, uh, let us get that. Well, that's what we need over there. You know what? Amen. By faith, God took something that was impossible, amen, that was not, amen, it took something that was not a thing, and he calls it ours and made it ours. Then when we talked about it and realized, hey man, we want to put a pavilion over there, and we want to have a playground mulched out for the kids like a like a state park, hey man, it was not there. You couldn't see it, hey amen, except through eyes of faith. Hey man, God gave me a faith vision of that. He said instead of having to go to the state parks and take all the kids and have services down there and all that stuff. You can have one across the road. And you know, I saw it in my eyes. Hey Amen. You can look over there right now. That is a faith pavilion. That is a faith playground. That is a faith facility over there. Hey Amen. That was not, but God made it out of something that didn't even exist. Amen. Come on. Faith is not a concept that you just go visit every time you come to church. Amen. That's what I, that's, I just want to make a point right here. It's something that you live in. The folks that learn to live by whatever this thing called faith is, I'm here to tell you something. They're going to get to experience something that other people don't get to experience. If we'll figure out what this faith thing is, and if we'll figure out how to live in it, walk in it, exist in it, amen, have, have, our, have our life in it, if the just shall uh, live by faith, and we're going to live by this faith, we'll figure out what faith is here real shortly. But if we can figure that out, and we start living in it, we are going to be the people that sees that we get to experience God in action. Amen. We get to experience the action of God. We will get to experience, amen, the potential of God. Amen. I preached a message about you. Uh, the name of the message was Until You Seen It Run. And I was talking about a, 
I was talking about a, an aircraft engine, and I, you know, I worked in a place and painted a place, and I saw them. They were sitting there in crates where they had rebuilt them. Hey, Amen. But and they looked pretty interesting. But they wasn't nothing like as interesting as when you seen them inside that F-17. Hey, Amen. Doing seven, eight hundred mile an hour. Hey, Amen. Streaking across the sky. Hey, Amen. You don't realize the potential that that thing does has sitting there in a crate in a, in a, in a, in a factory. Hey, Amen. Until it gets where it's supposed to be, and you get somebody that knows got a key to crank it up, hey man, and knows how, hey man, that, that, that understands how to operate that thing and let it do what it can do. Hey man, we've not seen churches, hey man, get cranked up and on fire and running. Hey man, that's the problem. We'll get to experience the power of God if we'll ever begin to start walking in faith, living in faith. I'd like to ask everybody a question real quick. Don't answer it. Just put it back there in the back of your mind. We'll answer it a little later today. Am I living, am I actually living in faith? I want, I want you to question your heart a little bit about it. Because I ought to be able, faith ought to be one of the simplest and easiest Topics and messages you can speak on in a Christian church. Everybody, we, it would be the easiest thing to talk about in the world. Faith, faith, faith. I mean, but to me, it's one of the hardest subjects that you can ever, I almost passed out when I got to thinking, I'm going to have to get up there and preach on faith. Because there's so many different definitions and understandings and applications of it because it, it it's the key to everything. You can't come to God without faith. You can't please God without faith. Hey Amen. You can't you can't be approved of God without faith. I'm going to prove all. I'm gonna, you know, we're going to the next chapter here in just a second. Chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. If, you'll, if you've got a Dakes annotated Bible, if you'll look on page 256, I believe it is, it has a little chart there. 18 different definitions of faith in this one chapter of the Bible. 18 definitions. It describes faith 18 different ways. I'm not going to get to that. But I just want to talk to you a little bit. Yeah, everything that we're going to have with God depends on a thing called faith. We need to understand what faith is. Well, apparently little children have a lot of it. Because in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, Jesus said, Except you come, become as these little children. You shall in no way inherit the kingdom of God. You, unless you, and, and there's something about them. That's the way you approach God is by faith. So these children... If we can watch their lives and see how when they just simply believe it. And you know what? When they believe it, they expect it. <clears throat> but faith is something that can't be forced or pushed on somebody. If I could, if we could get us a vaccine <laughs> and some syringes, I'd like to give everybody a good dose of faith this morning. But it don't come that way. <laughs> but it can be learned. Okay, I'll go ahead and give you some scripture for that. Faith cometh by hearing, yes. and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So that's a process of learning, isn't it? Hearing and learning. It can also be inherited. And not only by your blood, but it can be inherited through your church, through your worship. Paul told Timothy, he said, oh, let me just read that real quick. Timothy, it's 2 Timothy. You just go back a few pages. 2 Timothy uh, 1 and 5, I believe it is. Paul said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, the, the not fake, the not put on, Faith that, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So faith can be inherited a little bit there. And he said, you know what? He saw it, and he said, I, I know what it's supposed to look like. I know what it's supposed to feel like. I know what it's... 
So faith can be learned. I, and I, I, I'm, just, I'm just going to... I know I've done burn up some time here, but I got to do something. This is a little, this is a little Spanish Bible. And it's uh, La Biblia Ilustrada, Illustrated Bible. It's for little children to read. It's got pictures in it. And I just picked this up. To, I found it. We had it in the room, in one of the rooms in the house, and sent it in a drawer there. And I said, I'm going to pick that up. And I was reading the first verse of the next chapter of this scripture is um, in chapter 11, Hebrews. If you've got your, turn back to Hebrews chapter 11, read this. Because this defines faith. But I've never been able to, you know, it's such a complete and total definition of it. It's hard for me to explain this. It seems like I understand it. But it's hard for me to explain it in the way it's written here in King James Version. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I understand that. It's the substance of the things that I'm hoping for. I, I don't see it. I'm hoping for something, and it's the real part of it. And it's the evidence of something that I can't see. So it's kind of like, that don't make no sense in a way. Guess what? The things of God are not intended to make sense in your human mind. Right. It's called a mystery. Faith is a mystery. But I try to explain this because I, because it's important that we have it because if you read on down to verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so you can't come to God without faith. So the definition of faith, we need to understand that. I mean, that's a serious thing we need to understand. So anyway, I picked this Spanish Bible up. and it's a, Like I say, it's, it's very s simple, written, and children. But in Spanish, you, you may not understand what I'm saying in Spanish, but I, I, I got a lot out of it. I got a lot out of it. It says... I'm going to read that verse, reverse the scripture. Ahora bien, fe es la realidad lo que esperamos. Es la prueba palpable de lo que no podemos ver. Okay, what that means is, or, he said, okay then, ahora bien, okay then. Fe, F-E, is faith. That's what that means. Yo tengo fe en el Dios. I have faith in God, en el Señor. Okay, faith es la realidad. Okay, the, faith is the reality. That's what the realidad means in Spanish. Faith is the reality. And in the in King James Version, faith is the substance. Well, I love it in Spanish when it says, faith is the, the reality, the actual proof, the reality of those things that we are hoping for. And it's not only hoping for, it's, in los que esperamos. When you're, when you're, if Kathy's in the store and a Mexican guy comes out and he says, Por qué, what are you doing out here in your car? Ah, me and the kids esperamos and Sister Kathy, we're waiting on her. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd say, hey, wait a minute. Espera me un momento. Espera me. Espera means to wait. So, faith one, one part of faith is the reality in real time of that thing that we're just simply waiting on. Not only hoping for it, but we're just waiting on it. I'm waiting on it to happen. Those things that we're waiting on. And then it says, es la prueba. When I say prueba means, that, that is an interesting word. It's such an interesting word. Because it means a test. You're going to take a test. You're going to have to go take a prueba. This is a test. Driving test. La prueba de manejar. <laughs> test to drive. But it also means proof. If I come up and say, Hey, do you have a Bible? See? Prueba law. Prove it. Aquí está. I got it. Prove it. Prueba. Okay. 
I'm, I don't mean to not have a Spanish lesson here, but I just these words mean something to me, and and I think if I can explain this so good, it, it just like whoop, look out! It excited my faith. It really did. It's also it's not only the reality of that thing we're waiting on. It's also the proof, palpably. And that's, that same word is spelled the same way in English, only it's called palpable. <laughs> we pronounce it palpable, but in, in Spanish it's palpable. And what that means is something that is palpable. Ever, you ever been in a room where the tension was so palpable you could cut it with a knife? You know what that means? It's a feeling or a sensation that's so real that it feels like you can touch it. It's palpable. It's just like I can almost touch that. I can feel this. It's the proof of that thing that we can almost touch. <laughs> it's the reality. What is faith? What is faith? Faith is the reality of that thing that I'm waiting on. And it's the proof of, of that thing that I can almost touch right now. Oh my God, that wore me out. Man, that got me stirred up thinking about that. My God. Me go something else. We got to. I got a little bit more to get to. I hope you help you a little. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's, I, I just explained that. But faith isn't isn't simply a feeling. You can't just feel faith because a feeling is an emotion, and faith is more than an emotion. It. In, in Pentecostal churches, we've sort of mistranslated that to feeling like, oh, oh hallelujah, this is faith. Uh, hey, man, causing me to dance and run and jump. Uh, hey, man, hey, man, that sometimes faith, uh, hey, man, don't have a feeling because, listen, emotions and feelings are, they shift uh, on, on, according to the information you get. Hey, man, you get some bad information, the feelings shift a little bit. You get some good information, the feelings shift. Hey Amen. Faith, don't shift. Hey Amen. I'm expecting something to happen. It's the substance. It's the reality of what I'm expecting. I'm waiting for. Hey Amen. It's the proof of that thing. Hey Amen. That I know exists. Hey Amen. That I have a promise of. So yet it, it ain't something. It ain't just a feeling. Don't expect faith to be just a feeling that you get when you have the Pentecostal little men running up down your back. Hey Amen. Sometimes faith is quiet. Hey Amen. Sometimes, hey Amen. Sometimes you can come in and feel like that you ain't got a lick of faith, and that's when you've got the most. Sometimes people that you think got the most faith ain't got near what they need. Faith is tied to a substance, right? Now, faith is the. Finish it for me. Substance? So, faith is tied to a substance. Correct? Okay, we got to figure out what that is. What's the substance? Hmm. It ain't seen or experienced by the five senses, by the five senses, but it's a substance that you are convinced that is real. <coughs> What you're having is confidence in the substance is what faith is. Now, what you're, let me explain that. I'm going to break this down before Brother Nathan can understand it. I know I'm not trying to oversimplify this or anything for everybody. I, 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 I'm, I have to be, I have to have stuff broke down for me. I'm ha when you, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the substance I've got, I, at, my confidence is based on the integrity of the substance. This is what I want to get to right here. What's the substance? God. Hey man, I've got my confidence in the integrity. Hey man, that's the substance of the things I'm hoping for is God. Hey man, and the reason I've got confidence in that is because I know that the that the that the subject, to, hey man, matter. Hey man, who is God? The substance is God. I I it's based on the integrity of God. And this is not just one thing you need to be a Christian. This is the key thing. You can't have nothing else until you get faith. <clears throat> When we, and it, I'm going I'm to challenge everybody here. I'm going I'm to make it a little, little tough on you. 
This ain't gonna be one of them feel-good messages all the way through. Hopefully I've got somebody feeling good a couple of times along the way, but I'm fixing to make you feel bad. Because when we fail to live in this kind of faith that I'm talking about, you are challenging God's integrity. When you don't live by faith, in one way you can call, you're calling God a liar because we want to pick and choose the part we want to believe. We want to pick and choose the part we want to live. But living by faith is living by faith. Living by understanding the integrity of what God says. That You know what the easiest definition of faith is? You might got a piece of paper or pencil. If you, even if you've got a back, back cover on the back of your Bible, write this down. This is the easiest definition of faith that if you'll ever write this down, it'll change the way you see faith. The easiest definition is acting like God is telling the truth. Amen. That's exactly acting, yeah. acting, living, talking, walking, everything, yeah. acting like God is telling the truth. Yes. <laughs> God said, you can be healed. <laughs> I'm just going to act like I believe. God's telling the truth. That's it. My God. Walking by faith. That's what we're supposed to do too. Live by faith, walk by faith, walking by faith. Uh, where your feet are going and where your toes are pointed, I believe that has to be married to what you really believe about God. God is real. God does have power. God has promises in this word. God has the power. God is real. God has the promises and power. But you'll never see it until he starts seeing motion in your life toward that. Because faith, amen, amen that is nothing amen. more than something that you just simply believe that's in your mind, that you've heard, that you read, that's this, that, or it's just at church or whatever. Amen. That's nothing but a theory. Amen. And a theory, it won't get you in to see God. A theory won't get you to heaven. You've got to put that thing, amen, to work. You've got to put some skin in the game. You've got to put something on the on, on, on the table here. You've got to risk something a little bit for it to be genuine faith. Amen. You'll never see a mighty experience and a move of God until amen you put amen your faith in motion. God wants to see some motion. God wants to see you put it on the, on the line. I don't believe God will do what he said in Malachi 3.10. I knew you were going to say that brother Nathan. Well go ahead. What well, Malachi three ten said, however, rob God tithes and offerings. Oh, I, I, I just uh, you know I believe God. I have faith. I'm living in faith, all except for the part that he'll he if I'll give him my first ten percent, he'll make my ninety percent go farther. Hey, Amen. Yeah, well, you're cherry pick your faith, and you're not living in it. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. I, that come out. I'm sorry. Talk about something else. Talk about anything. Oh, I believe, I believe and have faith be saved, but God don't heal no more. <laughs> what? <laughs> God wants to see some motion. Oh I, oh, I believe God heals. I just don't really think he'll do it to me. I'm saying, look, act like God's telling the truth. Amen. My God. Just walk up here and say, I, I ain't got no idea why I'm walking up here. I don't, I don't know why God would ever want to heal me. But I'm, I'm acting like God told the truth when He said, I'm a God that changeth not. I won't, amen, I won't allow this thing to happen. Amen, you can, they can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Amen. That's faith. Preach, Brother Nathan. Okay. Until you put motion into your walking and living in faith, the promises are still there. The power is still there. It's all still there, but it's laying dormant. And it's not being activated by your life. Write something else down real quick. I'm gonna, I got a little cute little quote that I want you to write down. Faith, faith 
is acting like it's so. Even when it's not so. In order that it might be so. Simply because God said so. <laughs> I said faith is acting like it's so. Even when it's not so. In order that it might be so. Simply because God said so. I had to write that down. I want to share that with you. That, that's, that's a good definition of faith right there. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go to verse 2. For by it, what's that it, faith? For by it the elders obtained a good report. And the rest of this chapter, we call it the hall of faith, the hall of fame for people of faith. I call it a tour. <laughs> We're going to a tour of the ancients. Amen. We're going to tour, amen, some of the ancient examples of men and women of the Old Testament. And, and they are witnesses. Amen. What, what, what worked for them in the Old Testament, and what the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, how much more? Look at the very last verse, of, amen, of the book of Hebrews after he tells you all these, all that goes through this tour of these people. And he says, now they didn't get what we got, and they done that. My God, what we ought to be able to do. Amen. That's what he says. We look at it. Oh, let me tell you something. Verse 1 is the truth, and verse 2 says, these are the people that I have validated. Let me tell you something. When you walk and you live in faith, and you walk and you act like God, amen, is telling the truth, you live like you believe this thing is real, that it's not just a Sunday morning, amen, it's not just a religion, it's not just a church, it's not just a, a certain little event, a little feeling that you get at a certain time, amen, just at the summertime camp meeting revival, man, when you start living in that, uh, every day walking in this, uh, amen, living like, amen, even though uh, I, I'm acting like it's so, even though it ain't so, so, amen, because that's the way I make it so, because God said so. <clears throat> look at verse 10 of chapter 30. I mean, look at ch chapter 10, verse 36. Go back just a little bit where I read. After you have done the will of God, that means you've completed. Too many of us are still in school. Amen. Professional students coming to church, still learning, 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 learning. God wants us to start walking in faith, amen, and be completed after we've done what He's called us to do. He's called us to walk in faith. The just shall live by faith. Sometimes we want to pick and choose what we want to believe. I didn't went through that a little bit. We believe the things we like and kind of disregard the things we don't like. That's not living by faith. That's cherry picking faith. Cherry picking. What I like is that. Listen, if it's a, if if one word is false, it's all false. If one word's true, it's all yes. true. Yes. Amen. I want you to look at this list. Listen, listen. Living by faith. The, the three Hebrew. Hebrew you want an example? That's not in here. I, three Hebrew little boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the way most people know them. I know them as a real Hebrew name. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. If you don't believe me, go to the book of Daniel and find out that's their real names. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were names given to them in Babylon. But you know what they said? We don't know if we're going to save us out of this thing. But one thing about it, we trust God and we're not going to do that. What was their statement? Have faith in God. Mm -hmm. We trust God. Yes. Look at the book of Habakkuk. I would like for you to turn there too. You could Habakkuk. It's got not a hard book to find. It's 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 stuck in there. Just right right before Zephaniah, right after Nahum, the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 3, the last one of the last verses, listen to what Habakkuk says. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, ain't getting that, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. I right, went there and ain't found no grapes. Neither 
The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. No, we're talking desolation. We're talking to empty Walmart shelves is what we're talking. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. We're talking empty. <clears throat> Nothing out there to go. I mean, can't even find a grape. The cow's dead. The hogs died. Chickens ain't laying. They ain't got nothing. Even though the fig tree don't blossom, even though the olive fails, even though there's no, there's no ox in the stall, look at the next verse. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the, in the God of my salvation. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I know who God is. He is the God of my salvation. He will save me in the end. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at this list here in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. This whole, the hall of faith. <laughs> the hall of fame of faith people. I want you to look at a few names in there. You're going to find a prostitute. You're going to find a drunk. You'll find a couple of liars. You're going to find some messed up people. And they made it into chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. And the verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. For by it the elders gained approval of God. And these are the kind of people that's in this list. I'm just glad God didn't let church people make that list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably a lot of people wouldn't be in that list. <laughs> You let some church people make that list. That ought to be some good news to some of you that walked in here this morning. Hey, man, they didn't start out, hey, hey man, men and women of faith, they didn't start out good. Hey, man, one of them was a prostitute, one was a drunk, two was a, I mean, they liars and everything else, murderers, you can name, hey, man, what all they done wrong, hey, man, but God turned them around, hey, man, and they began to live by faith. The just shall walk and live by faith. Even if you walked in this place this morning, I'm closing. Oh, Lord, I am closing. I went a little, a little farther than I meant to. If you walked in here this morning, a spiritual disaster. If you will right now, today, decide that you're going to start living by faith. If you're going to start living and acting and walking and talking like you believe what, that God's telling the truth, there's going to be some change. Hey Amen. God can still put your name on the list no matter what it is. Just quit faking it. Quit coming in and playing. Quit playing religion. Quit coming in and thinking, you know what? I believe God's telling the truth. And that's not only about healing. That ain't about the good stuff. I believe God's telling the truth that there's going to be a judgment. I believe that God's telling the truth. Hey Amen. That one of these days you're going to give an account for the evil deeds done in your body and the word said it out of your mouth. I believe that God's telling the truth, amen, that he's going to bring punishment upon the evildoers. I believe there's, there's a time coming, amen, amen, that hell is going to is enlarging itself. I'm telling you, I believe that he's telling the truth. Amen. That's part of walking in faith. Yes. And when we start doubting, we start doubting, we start messing up, doubting, I don't know. I just don't want to go up there and get prayed for because I'm afraid I might not get healed. You are challenging the integrity of God. But well, we don't want to believe what God says in His Word. Oh, He said that and He didn't mean it. Well, you know what? You're calling God a liar. And how dare you ask? Say <laughs> so you're asking me a question. How, why would I want to answer your prayer if you call me a liar every day by the way you lived? Yes. Living out, of, you're not living in, in faith, you're living in doubt, living in fear. Guess what? That's what the centurion did when he said, I know, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come. My servant's sick at my house and he's about to die. But no, 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 don't, 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 don't do nothing. 
All you've got to do is send your word to him. Jesus stopped everything right there. He said, God, you got it. You're not far from the kingdom of... He said, I've not seen this kind of faith in Israel. <coughs> what did you say? Say that one more time. He said, Lord, you don't have to go all the way to my house to heal him and touch him. Just send your word. He said, I, I know how this works. I'm a man under authority. I have men that work under me. I... He said, just send your word and it'll work. I believe that. I believe there's a tear coming out of Jesus. Said, That's what I'm talking about. That's the way I've operated from the very beginning. Go all the way back to the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. Amen. And he said the rhema word, divine utterance. Let there be light. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. The rhema word, the divine utterance. Hey man, God has given us the authority. He's given us the rhema word, the divine utterance. Hey man, to speak those things into existence that are not. Hey man, your home may not look like it's fixable. Hey man, your life may not look like it's ever going to be salvageable. Your health may not look like it's ever going to get no better. Your finances may look like a train wreck. Hey man, but I'm going to tell you something. God can take something that is not and make it the best thing it's ever was. God can do it if we'll live and walk by faith. It's like a prescription. How come I believe this Bible? Because I know who wrote it. Somebody say, Brother Nathan, I'd read that Bible, but I just don't understand it. I just don't understand much about it. The question is, do you trust it? Do you trust it? Yeah, I trust it. You know why I trust it? Because I trust who wrote it. Yes. I trust who wrote it. Yes. He has integrity. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lie about it. Amen. It's kind of like going to go to the doctor and they write you out a prescription. God wrote you out a prescription. Take about two of these chapters and sleep on it and come see me in the morning. Take a couple of these principles that you need to, things that you need to get out of your life. Hey, a couple of these other things you need to put in your life. Live like it's the truth, like you believe it. Yes. You come and see me in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's a prescription, right? You know how good a prescription is? It ain't good. It ain't nothing but ink on paper until you take it to the pharmacy. Hey, man, and they do what they do, and they give you the real deal, and you take the pill. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. You got a prescription. But are you, are you getting it filled? Right. I'm asking y'all to get filled. <laughs> Man, yes. Come on. Oh, you weren't yes. expecting that one, was you? You need to get your prescription filled. Yes. And you do that up here. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you get that prescription filled. I'm going to act on that prescription. I'm going to align every area in my life up yeah, with the you. faith. Yeah. Because why? Because it's God's integrity that's on the line. I'm going to give you an example of faith. Colton, where is Colton? He's my little grandson. Well, Ryder done the same thing. Riley does the same thing. They would get up on the porch. My daddy done me the same way. Get him up on the porch before we had the before we had the rail around it. And get up very close. Say, Ryder, jump off. Now, Ryder was probably the quickest one to have faith. Man, he didn't take long. He didn't go. Colton's a little slower. Riley. Say, jump, jump. Pa, I'll catch you. No. Come on. Come on, get over here. And he, he's just a little closer to the edge. I said, now just jump. Just jump. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. No, no, no. Don't just jump. You know what? They hadn't gained the confidence in my integrity that Pa was able, capable, and was willing, could be trusted to catch him. <laughs> See, that's where he starts out at. When you're not having faith, you're not really trusting that God either, either don't have the ability or you can't trust him to do it. That's why I said it's a challenge to God's integrity. Hey, if you don't jump off this porch, that says something about what you think about me. Now, you better jump off that porch now. Pa ain't going to let you fall. 
Finally, I got them talked into it. But you know what they did? Pa, Riley, remember this? Pa, come a little closer. <laughs> you know why? Because I kept putting that word on them. I kept putting that word in them. Hey, trust me. Trust me, you can jump, I won't drop you. You can jump, I won't, I won't let you fall. Trust me, trust me. Come a little closer. Oh, God said, come a little closer. Yes. Hey, man, you can yes. trust me. Yes. You can trust me, I won't let you fall. Jump, jump, lose everything. Hey, man, faith is jumping. Faith is letting go. Faith ain't leaning. Faith ain't just having one foot up. Faith is jumping off. What faith is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to jump off this morning and say, God, catch me. Mm -hmm. Stand up all over the house. Hallelujah.